um, dynamic solution trains. So what does it mean? I mean, um, solution train is obviously something that we um, have in the big picture, in the safe big picture, like you have several HR release trains and then um, you may have the necessity to coordinate these uh, release trains by setting up a, a solution train on top of the multiple HR release trains that you may have. Now, um, the question is, um, how do we do that? Uh, there is, uh, of course, um, a certain amount of guidance in the safe material, but um, usually when you're setting up HR release trends, and I'm doing that now for um, almost 10 years, um, the question is like, um, how exactly does that work? Because the guidance is um, not that like <laughs> not that detailed like what we have when we are setting up an agile uh, and a normal HR release train. So dynamic solution train, um, hopefully by the end of the presentation, you, you will get why I uh, wrote dynamic here. Now, um, the first thing is uh, um, try to envision like the future of agility. <laughs> what could that be? And so uh, for me, um, the most important aspect in like the upcoming years is that we probably will see um, organizational structures disappear more and more and we will have more like organizational skills um, replacing organizational structures. So what does that mean? I mean, um, we have a lot of structures usually when we set up Scrum, Safe or whatsoever, like we have uh, events, roles, artifacts that we are setting up to help um, companies um, to cope with more complex problems. Um, now, this is from my personal perspective, probably something that will come to an end, like just setting up structures is only uh, is only fun for a certain amount of time. Um, it uh, organizational skills are um, something that like gives the organization the capability to set up structures on their own whenever needed or ramp down structures again when they are not needed any longer. So it's more like um, to be more dynamic, more flexible, you have to teach uh, the participants of an HR release train or a solution train skills uh, and not just give them structures within which they then have to work. Now let's look at how, uh, so what we are doing here. So we are, I mean, this is an, a typical agile release train. Uh, it has several agile teams. So the the green dots are people, the orange circles are the agile, uh, the agile teams within an agile release train. If you look at a solution train, um, what we usually do is um, trying to group uh, the agile teams into solution areas of two to four teams. Um, two to four teams, like mini trains, you could say, the solution areas are usually much more flexible and they are a good uh, training ground for organizational skills. So um, uh, organizational skill, um, um, uh, solution areas could have five, maybe a maximum, but usually I end with like four, saying two to four is usually a solution area. Um, it could be that you have also agile release trains within a solution train saying, hey, maybe multiple um, solution areas have the necessity to coordinate closer together. So they are like they are giving themselves um, a, a superstructure of an uh, of an HR release train, but it's not that necessary. So you could have an, a solution train just with solution areas, uh, but usually it's very helpful to have release trains also within the solution train. Now, another thing that we are usually doing setting up edge, uh, solution trains is a planning, what we call a planning conference. So a planning conference is uh, something like a PI planning just on solution train level. It follows a pretty straightforward agenda that we know from the PI planning modified in certain parts. But it's, it's um, of course, um, natural that if you have like 400 people in a solution train that you are not able to invite 400 people to such a planning conference. So you have to work with representatives and they are usually generating a solution board or an, what we uh, call an agile solution board. Now, this is what we are just doing, like setting up solution uh, trains with the help of solution areas, um, setting up planning conferences, creating HR solution boards. Now, um, if we are going back um, to that slide, so here, uh, 
it, it, this is a solution train with solution areas in it. And if you uh, look at that, a release train with uh, agile teams in it, you see the self-similarity. So what we are actually doing is we are trying to scale up the building blocks. So the building blocks for an agile release train is usually an agile team. So you have maybe 10 building blocks, like 10 agile teams building up that agile release train. If you have solution areas, it's a kind of self-similar saying, hey, we have maybe 10 solution areas building up that solution train. And this is usually easier to do. Now, um, having said that, so how do we actually do that? Um, and here we have an example of magnetic resonance imaging system. It's composed of a lot of different uh, architecturally significant components. So um, if we are, uh, Sorry, um, here we have five aspects that we are trying to like now explain uh, with this example of a, 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 an MRI system. So the first is uh, reviving the feature team idea. So uh, we don't want to spoon feed the teams and I will uh, just in, in a second tell you about that. We want um, to work on objectives together. So the basic idea that we have um, when we are setting up scrum teams is usually that we have feature teams. Probably everyone has heard of feature teams saying, hey, you have to have all the skills, all the tools necessary to create an end customer value, or at least like a certain significantly independent part of value if you are creating a bigger machinery or whatever. Now, this is hard to do if you're setting up a solution train because a solution train is usually um, like several hundred engineers working together and a single team with maybe eight or ten people in a scrum team um, is usually not able to generate a significant value within such a big system. So what we are doing is we want to get from feature team to feature solution areas, reviving that feature team idea again, just on a higher level saying, yeah, maybe two to four teams with a maximum of five, they could maybe have the tools and also the skills necessary to create a significant amount of the value. Now, uh, here we have an example um, uh, from an MRI system saying, hey, we have a patient table here, like uh, where the patient is lying down before uh, it, the, the scanner <laughs> starts working. Now, uh, on that patient table, it could be that we have like four teams. And, and this is a realistic number saying maybe we have two hardware, two software teams working just on that patient table. So they are producing a significant value to the whole system. And so they can more easily be seen as something like a feature team just on solution uh, area level, like a feature solution area. Now, um, the, the problem that we usually have is that we are, uh, that we have challenges working on objectives if we decompose the whole work of a big system just into team work like scrum teamwork. So we want to uh, work on objectives, but usually that also means that several teams have to work together um, to produce a certain objective anyway. So um, this is why um, one, one aspect why solution areas usually come handy when you have a, such a large system, because then you are able again to follow objective and not just create work items like you see in that picture saying, okay, in the refinement phase before the PI plannings of the trains, we are creating work items and these work items are then handed down to the, to the teams and the teams have to fulfill whatever is necessary and integrate that back, but they are often not able to make significant changes on their own again because they have to coordinate with so many other teams so um, that they are more or less like spoon fed like okay here is your work item and you have to do exactly that exactly like we say um, so um, that means having several teams already in a solution area makes spoon feeding the teams much less likely and the second aspect is uh, fast synchronization so if we if we set that up like a solution area with two to four teams, if we set that up to synchronize fast right from the beginning, it's usually not that much of an effort to like um, agree on a new aligned understanding of a new objective if you want to change something. So um, for the event synchronization within a solution area, like 
you have four teams in the solution area, what we have seen with the patient table solution area, um, we usually start using this three times three metric saying, hey, if we want to synchronize our Scrum events like planning, daily, review, retro, we think about what could be a pre-event, an event and a post-event to that and who takes part, like representatives of the teams, like product owners, scrum master, architects, whatever, the teams individually or a big room uh, set up. And we look at three examples. So one example could be like, now you have a two week sprint cadence. And at the uh, the start of the two week sprint, um, you say, hey, um, uh, we have the, the planning, the scrum sprint planning on the first day. Maybe we have like for half an hour or an hour, the PO is meeting, um, just on their own, like four teams, four POs are meeting and they are aligning on uh, whatever is necessary for the second part so that the teams individually meet in their team room and they are doing the normal sprint planning within their teams, which they had done anyway. But after that, we have maybe a post event bringing all the teams together, like you have four teams, you bring 40 people into a kind of a small big room event together saying, hey, maybe for another hour, uh, we are coordinating what we have uh, planned in our individual team plannings and um, talk about the dependencies and see where we can uh, maybe make things better. Now, it could be completely different. It could be like the team start right away with individual planning, maybe with a two hour session, and then they gather together in a big room event like all the team, all, all the four teams, all the 40 people for another two hours saying, hey, um, OK, uh, let's look at uh, the dependencies we have. And maybe afterwards we have another 30 minutes where the Scrum Masters are meeting, talking about dependencies, talking about risk management and things like that. Could be. So it could be like that the first thing here is an hour or two hours. It could be that you have like um, you think yet that uh, there are a lot of dependencies that you're planning. So maybe this is three hours then because um, you want to give the teams a lot of time to work together. Or maybe you think there are a lot of risks that you have to talk about later on and you want to make a, a proper risk management um, Excel sheet with whatever. And maybe this is also like taking longer than 30 minutes, maybe an hour. So you see the setup could be um, a lot different in different cases. It could also be like on the next slide that you say, hey, um, maybe it's really just a big room event. We are bringing all the teams together for maybe four hours and there is no individual planning uh, of the teams whatsoever. There is no pre-planning, no post-planning. So that means that we are actually not giving the teams a structure like what we are doing usually uh, with the scrum framework saying okay here's the planning you have to do exactly that but what we are giving them is more like boundary conditions saying hey you have to synchronize you have to come up with the optimum synchronization mechanism for your sprint planning or for your retro and review and um, you have to think about what uh, amount of overhead is justifiable for the communication collaboration needs that you have so here you see an agile release train with uh, several solution areas and uh, also teams in it. Now you could have a solution area across several agile uh, release trains. In this case too, you say, hey, um, maybe we have a certain system that is required in two agile release trains. And um, so these teams here have to synchronize closely together, um, but they also have to cater to the needs of um, the agile release trains. Uh, now, um, it could also be that you have like a platform that is um, relevant for each train. Maybe you have something like um, continuous integration server or things like that, uh, which you have like um, scrum teams to care for in each train. Now, um, they also have to make sure that this continuous integration server, for instance, is like aligned over all the trains. Then a solution area could come in that form. Um, in, but how do you synchronize then the solution areas with the trains? Now, when you think about the Scrum uh, events like Scrum planning at the start of the spl sprint, the daily uh, review retro, uh, the solution area teams do that within their solution area. But when it comes to the, the train events like uh, the PI planning, the system demos, the inspect and adapt session, then the solution area splits up and they go to the train. And as they are synchronized so closely in the solution area throughout their sprint work, it's usually 
easy for them to make um, decentralized decisions when they are in their respective uh, train events. Now, here you see that. So uh, during the sprint, they are together in a solution area. Um, during the events of the HR release trains, they are going to the respective HR release trains that they, are uh, that they belong to. Now, it's not just about events. It's also about artifacts, roles, collaborations. And uh, we also use matrices for that to synchronize, like saying, hey, who is actually um, working in which agile team within the solution area? So who is actually representing each of these teams for different purposes within the solution area, like product owner, scrum master, technical architects, and so on, and who actually is representing the solution area to the outside world. So this is also something that um, you can reduce the overhead a lot if you come up with a, a clever solution to that. And usually this matrix is something that like starts a good discussion. We also have that for artifacts. Do we need um, backlog for each individual team within a solution area or do we need a backlog for the so whole solution area or do we need both like one backlog for a whole solution area but a more detailed backlog for the teams or whatsoever do we have to have a definition of done for instance for the whole um, solution area or does each team has an individual definition of done um, or is it a mixture of both so there are a lot of different aspects to that um, also with um, collaborations like do we have a kanban board in common or does each team has a kanban board or how do we deal with pair work or mob, or mob working or, or things like that so you can synchronize a lot within a solution area if you want to encapsulating complexity the third aspect of the solution area meaning hey nobody outside a scrum team usually cares for uh, the dependencies within the scrum team like if a tester and a, a java developer have to work together to create something usually nobody outside that scrum team usually cares about this dependency within the solution area uh, within the scrum team and the same is true for the solution area so whatever we have as dependencies within the solution area just stay within the solution area. And this may also means that we could have more of a messy value stream within solution areas than if we have just single scrum teams and they hand that over one scrum team to another. And usually messy value streams can help a lot in creating value. Now, here we see a typical solution area board. Like here we have the three teams in the solution area. They may have a lot of dependencies, but beneath the thick black line, there are the dependencies to the outside world. And usually there are much less dependencies to the outside world than within. Um, so this is usually the sovereignty of the agile team, uh, of the agile teams within the solution area. And this here it becomes the stewardship of the product management usually, uh, which is then depicted on the uh, solution board we have seen earlier or here um, in another version. Okay, so only the things that are not within a solution area, so only these dependencies in the gray area are then depicted on the solution board. Now, uh, no one is allowed to plan the work for someone else. So this is usually something that uh, we have as an unwritten law in SAFE. And this is also true uh, for big systems like that. So um, it's usually that the teams within the solution area are driving the backlog, uh, are driving the solution board here. And we do that usually in update cycles, like weekly update cycles. Like every week, we have an aligned understanding of all the solution areas working in that solution train represented by the solution board. Now, the fourth thing is reacting fast to changing value stream networks. So here we have like domains. We are working on domains. This would be like three domains from uh, an MRI system. Um, and here we have a problem space on top of domain. So usually we are good at solving problems within a domain, but what when it comes to problems across domains? So um, this is just an example that there are cross domain uh, problems uh, for MR systems. And so what we see here are solution areas working on these domains. But when we have cross um, cross domain problems to solve, then we gather together people or teams from different domains, from different uh, solution areas working on different domains creating new solution areas. So this is also very helpful. And so uh, here we have this fluidity model saying the domains are usually the most constant things like the architectural domains. Then we have problem spaces in between on top of the domains. And then we have solution areas who are able to flow around the problem spaces. So organizational structures must be able to flow around architectural needs. And 
this is also why we need our organizational skills in the future much more to be able to respond much faster to these things. And the last thing, and then I'm done, is um, uh, solution areas are usually a good incubator for organizational learning. Like agile teams are, are good in learning, but they are in uh, large systems, they're usually too small to make significant changes, like that they are able to make significant changes. And on the other hand, we have agile release trains who are often too large to react like quickly to changes um, in these systems. But solution areas with two to four teams or maximum of five, they often have the right size to react fast to problems with coming up within large systems. So they can react fast and they are big enough uh, to also make significant changes to that. That's it. Like from my point of view, organizational structures will be more and more replaced in the future by organizational skills, which we already see for for like more than a decade in professional sports team already. And it's uh, pr probably not that far away if you look at sports teams that we probably will see that in the future um, of agile development also. Thank you.